Hey, what's up guys? In this video, I am going to show you how to do spot color separation in Photoshop for screen printing. This is a vector artwork created in Adobe Illustrator. There are four colors in this artwork, white, blue, orange, and then pink. And we are going to color separate this vector artwork in Photoshop. You need to know the proper steps and settings in Photoshop to do spot color separation, which is what I am going to show you in this video. So let's dive right into the video. I have opened the vector artwork in Illustrator. This artwork is downloaded from vecteasy.com. I have given the link to download in the description. Feel free to download the artwork if you like to follow along with me. Once you have downloaded and extracted the file, you can find a .eps file inside the folder. Open the .eps file in Illustrator. First, let's resize the artwork in Illustrator and then move to Photoshop to do color separation. I'll create a new artboard using the artboard tool. I'll change the artboard size to A4. Now, using the Move tool, I'll move the artwork to the new artboard. I'll hit Ctrl plus R to bring out the rulers and right click on them and choose centimeters as the units. The size of the artwork is 36 centimeter width and 36 centimeter height. Now, before changing the size, we need to expand the artwork by going to Object Expand. Now click OK. This will expand all the strokes in the artwork. Now, make sure the link icon is checked and set the width you want. I'll set 15 cm width. The height value will change automatically proportionate to the width value we entered. Now, I'll move the artwork inside the artboard and delete the other artboard. Let's save the file to AI format by going to File, Save As. I'll simply name it for part color artwork and then click Save. This will bring out the save options. Just click OK and our file is saved. I'll close Illustrator and open the saved file in Photoshop by going to File, Open and then choose the file. Since the file format is AI, you will get this import PDF box. In this, make sure you have anti-aliasing turned off. This is very very important. If you don't turn off anti-aliasing, you will get blurred pixels in your artwork and the color selections will not be perfect, so it must be turned off. Next, set the resolution to 600 dpi. When the standard resolution for print is 300 dpi, why do we need to set 600 dpi? Well, the reason is we are converting a vector image into a raster image. Photoshop will transform all the vector data into pixel data. So if we need results like what we get in Adobe Illustrator, only with a high resolution we can achieve that in Photoshop. You can go as high as 1200 dpi, but 600 dpi works very well. But don't go below 450 dpi. If you do, then you will see a loss in the quality when you print out film positives. Alright, so we have turned off anti-aliasing, resolution is set to 600 dpi. We have already set the image size in Illustrator before bringing it into Photoshop. Don't change the size in Photoshop, okay? Set the mode to RGB color and then now click OK. Let's rename this layer as artwork. Now go to image, canvas size. I'll change the units from centimeters to inches. Now, let's increase the canvas size by 2 inches in width and 2 inches in height. This will increase the canvas size by 1 inch on all the 4 sides so that we have space to add registration marks later. Now, make a new layer and rename it to T-shirt color. Let's fill it with black color by going to edit, fill Choose black color from the drop down and then click OK. Now let's make a copy of the artwork layer by right clicking on it and then choosing duplicate. Let's bring it to the top. Let's zoom in and check the artwork. You can see the edges of the artwork are crisp and clear. This is because we have turned off the anti-aliasing option when we imported the artwork. I'll zoom out. Now, let's separate the colors starting from light to dark. White is the lightest. Make sure you have the artwork layer selected. Now, choose the magic wand tool. In the magic wand tools options, set the tolerance to a lower number like 10. Make sure you have anti-aliasing turned off and contiguous turned off. 
If the contiguous option is turned on, the magic wand tool will only select the similar color pixels in the area where we click. It will not select all the similar color pixels in the artwork. In our artwork, if I click on the white color here, the magic wand has selected the white color pixels in only this portion of the artwork. It did not select all the white color pixels in the artwork. So I will now deselect the selection by going to the select menu and choosing deselect. You can do the same using the keyboard shortcut Ctrl plus D. Since we want to select all the white color pixels in the artwork, we need to turn off the contiguous option. So if we click on the white color now, we have selected all the white color pixels in the artwork with just a click. So to move the white color to a new layer, let's right click and choose the layer via cut. This will cut the selected pixels and put them into a new layer. So we have separated all the white colored pixels in the artwork without a single pixel missing and moved it to a new layer. Let's rename the layer one to white. Let's zoom in and check. I have zoomed in 300%. The edges are so crisp and clear. This is not possible if you have anti-aliasing turned on. You won't notice any of the jagged edges you see here when printed because of the high resolution of this artwork. The result will be the same as what you get when you color separate it as a vector in Adobe Illustrator. Okay, now I'll zoom out. I'll hide the white layer, turn on the artwork copy layer and then select it. Now I'll repeat the same steps with the magic wand tool to get the blue, orange and pink colors in the artwork. First I'll click on the blue color. Right click and then choose layer via cut. Rename it to blue. Next I'll click on the orange. I've made a mistake here. I did not select the auto copy layer. Now the blue layer is selected and so that's why the selection is the blue color. So I'll deselect the selection. I'll choose the auto copy layer. Now click on the orange color. Now right click then choose layer via cut I'll rename it to orange turn it off and then i'll choose the auto copy layer and then click on the pink color i'll right click choose layer via cut rename it to pink to make sure that we haven't missed any pixels in the auto layer hold the control key and click on the thumbnail of the layer. So if we get this message, no pixels are selected, then that means the layer is empty and we have got all the colored pixels separated. Let's delete this layer. Now rearrange the layers starting from light color to dark color. So first white, then blue, then orange and then pink. Since the colors in this artwork have space between them and are not touching one another, we don't need to trap the colors. Trapping is basically expanding the edges of the light colors a few pixels to go below the dark colors so that gaps don't show up when the colors are printed one by one. And we also don't need accurate and tight registration in the printing press. Trapping helps a lot in the printing press to get a perfect print. Even if the colors are touching in one part of the artwork, then trapping is needed. If you want to know how to do trapping, then be sure to check out my video on trapping. I have given the link in the description. So we have our vector artwork color separated in Photoshop the right way. This when printed will have the same quality as what we get when we color separated in Illustrator. If you are someone who does color separation in Adobe Illustrator, try this method in Photoshop. Doing color separation in Photoshop is a lot easier than doing it in Adobe Illustrator. Follow the steps I showed and you will get the exact result in Photoshop just like what you get in Illustrator. If you have any doubts, leave a comment in the comment section and I'll be glad to help. Hope you find this video helpful. I'll see you in another video. Take care.